The Prophet Muhammad passes away, and uh, Muhammad did not die suddenly or unexpectedly. He died after an illness that lasted about 10 days or two weeks. He died after he received what he knew to be the final revelation. And it seems quite clear that he realized that having received the final revelation, that his life was essentially over, or that the end was near. Uh, he had founded not only a new religion, but actually a new political order in Arabia. And despite the fact that he enjoyed political as well as religious success, despite the fact that he knew he was dying, he didn't do what any normal um, uh, political leader would do, right? Which is try to ensure who his successor is as a way of, 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 of ensuring the continuation of your legacy, according to Sunnis. According to Sunnis, the Prophet Muhammad did not leave any instructions at all about who should succeed him. The Quran says nothing about who should rule the Muslim community at all. It says you should obey those who are in authority, but it doesn't say who should be in authority or what are the qualities or the criteria that people need to hold authority. The Quran says nothing. In traditional tribal Arabia, when a person died, when a man died who was the head of a clan or a tribe, it was his son who would take over. Muhammad didn't have any sons. There was no guidance for what should happen after the death of Muhammad. Now, when a Muslim dies in Islam, uh, the close family members are supposed to take the body and wash it in a ritual fashion and prepare it for burial. And according to the tradition, um, Muhammad's family, that is his daughter, Fatima, his only, the only daughter to, uh, to live beyond the time of Muhammad himself, at least for a little while, and her husband, Ali, which should have a little in front of it there, I forgot it. Um, her husband, Ali, um, along with some of the other family members of Muhammad, were preparing Muhammad's body for burial. And at that time, the people who were living in Medina were in a situation of a bit of, of panic. I don't know if panic's quite the right word. A little bit of um, um, disquiet. They didn't know exactly what to do. Muhammad had united for the first time all of these different tribes and all of these different groups, but now Muhammad, the person himself who held all these groups together, was no longer there. And what should happen? And so there was a lot of talk among the early community saying, well, you know, now that Muhammad is not here, he hasn't named a successor, you know, we'll all just go on being Muslim, but we'll go our own separate ways. Right? The people in Medina, who were originally from Medina, right, the helpers, you heard this in one of the lectures, um, they said, look, we'll, we'll name someone from our group, be our leader. You, people of Quraysh, you can go back to Mecca if you want, name your own leader. We'll all be Muslims, but we don't have to be one community. And some of Muhammad's close followers, including these two figures, Abu Bakr and Omar, um, were not very happy with this. They felt that Islam was about Tawheed, it was about unity, it was about being together, it was about holding this community together, that this was, uh, was of utter importance. And so they immediately call a meeting uh, in which Omar nominates Abu Bakr to be the leader of the community, using the term caliph or khalifa, which means successor or representative. Okay. And they do this, it's quite clear, for fear that the community would dissolve if some action was not taken immediately. And there was very good reason to nominate Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr was a very old friend of Muhammad. He was a friend of Muhammad's from before the time Muhammad became a prophet. Um, he was almost the same age as, as Muhammad. Uh, when they made the hijra from Mecca to Medina, Muhammad made that journey alone with only one other person, and that person was Abu Bakr. Um, and uh, Abu Bakr was a very wealthy man. He really gave almost all of his wealth to the Islamic cause. It was clear that he was dedicated to Islam and to the message that was brought by Muhammad. And Abu Bakr was also the father of Aisha, who was one of Muhammad's favorite wives, if not her, his favorite wife, after Khadija. And so there was very, very good reason to nominate Abu Bakr. And it was unanimously agreed upon by everyone who happened to be present there. But there was someone who wasn't present there, who was Ali, right. 
Um, and um, when he and his family hear about this, they don't accept it right away. It seems quite clear that Ali thought that he had at least a right to be present at this discussion, if not the right to be a major candidate for succession to Muhammad, on the basis of a number of important factors. Um, Abu Bakr was the first male, uh, adult male convert to Islam, but Ali was the first male convert to Islam. The time when Islam came to Muhammad, when the first revelation came to Muhammad, Ali was living in his house. Muhammad was taking care of him. Uh, so he was a, a Muslim from the very beginning. He was extraordinarily close to the Prophet Muhammad. He was his most trusted scribe. He was one of the greatest warriors, one of the most fearless warriors. And Muhammad made a number of very, very uh, laudatory statements about Ali. He said, for example, and these are, these are traditions that are recorded in Sunni and Shiite tradition, uh, that uh, Ali, that I am the uh, door, uh, uh, I am the gate of, of knowledge, I, I'm sorry, I'm the city of knowledge and Ali is its gate, right? So he is the gate to the knowledge that, that I possess as a prophet. And there are others as well. So anyway, there was a lot of reason, but of course Ali was also married to Muhammad's only daughter. That made him Muhammad's son-in-law. So Muhammad didn't have any sons, but he was his son-in-law. And Ali seems to have, think, to have thought that all of those characteristics put together qualified him at least for consideration uh, for who should succeed Muhammad. Now, displeased with this particular turn of events, Ali refused to give his allegiance to Abu Bakr for a period of about six months. And about around that time, around six months after the death of Muhammad, Fatima died. Fatima, the wife of Ali and the daughter of Muhammad, also passed away. And after, shortly after Fatima passed away, Ali came and gave his allegiance to Abu Bakr. Uh, so what were the reasons? Did, did Ali at a certain point decide it was just um, wiser and in the interest of the Muslim community to have unity and not to continue holding out like this? Some people say that that was the case. Other people say that he felt that it was his marriage to Fatima, the idea that he was the son-in-law of Muhammad, that, that gave him the right uh, to the leadership. In either case, after about six months, he gives his allegiance to Abu Bakr. Now, there was an event that took place uh, that, that Shiites cite, in addition to all these other qualities for Ali, that is their argument, or one of their primary arguments for the fact that it really was Ali and not Abu Bakr who should have been the immediate successor to Muhammad. And that is, when Muhammad made his farewell pilgrimage, and he was on his way back from that pilgrimage, and everyone was gathered together, right? All, practically all of the, the community was gathered together. Uh, he made a statement. He called Ali up to himself, and he made a statement. He, he took Ali by the hand and raised his hand, and he said to them, For whomever I am their Lord, Ali is their Lord. O oh God, befriend the friends of Ali, and be the enemy of his enemies. This statement on the part of the Prophet is remembered in both Sunni and Shiite sources. Sunnis argue that this was just a general statement in favor of Ali, that Ali had incurred the jealousy of lots of people. He had made some people angry. The Prophet was trying to make a general statement about um, his, his character in relation to Muhammad. But for Shiites, this was a direct nomination of Ali. And so this event be, will become very crucial in, um, in, in, in Shiite history and Shiite thought.